Hello and welcome to the Sheep Seats. I am your host, Matthew, a.k.a. Sheep, a.k.a. Dark Sheep. We are drafting a perfect game tonight. Um, started good with my music starting in the middle of the recording, but that's all right. We have some guests tonight. Let's welcome in Noah and Matt. What's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? What's going on? I'm really excited to be here. It's pretty awesome. Brad, perfect really game class draft. Joel. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we are all three of us are in the draft, so we're just gonna move right over to it. We are at two people. We need two people to help us fill this. Uh and we're full. Wow. So well, let's go. I love to see that. I love awesome. to see that. What's up, Joka? Unity never fails. So hopefully uh people got in if they wanted to get in. Hopefully. We caught somebody sitting in the lobby that's going to be auto drafting, or maybe not. I don't know if we want that or not, but uh, <clears throat> I don't see myself on the uh, screen. Then I have to scroll, which is never a good thing. Okay. It's never a good feeling. It's never a good feeling. We got the 12 spot. So this <clears throat> is going to be fun. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, the, as is usual, when I try to plan something, it is like almost full right before we start. We do have Billy Joe. We got Brad. We got Sam Olson. We got you guys. We got no bow Bo socks. And uh and just for those watching, Noah is uh is sock muffin on the site, so don't get get confused. So yeah, you guys were all sort of in the middle at the end. Um, what do you think about your starting spots? I mean, for me, I'm just happy to to be in before the outfield, you know, onslaught ends. We'll see who I end up with. But honestly, just having an outfielder obviously just feels comfortable. But you know, I'm happy for you at least have 12. Maybe it's not the best spot for you personally, but at least first stream to, you know, show how a 12 spot is done. You know, it's always, I think, maybe a more exciting way to see a draft yeah. develop. Because, you know, within the first 10, it's pretty, pretty obvious. But once you get to, you know, where you're at on the turn, a lot more decisions can be made. And then throughout the draft, you just have harder decisions to make, you know, whether you want to catch up on outfield or not. So should be should be fun for the stream. Um not too not too upset with where I am ended up, but obviously would have preferred to be in the top, but can't complain. Yeah, I've I've run I've run pretty good on the one one. So mm -hmm. like the first eliminator that fired off, I got it. So Ooh, Freddie Freeman at six. So oh, all right. We, 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 we got a no badge in here and we're we're already paying its dividends nice and early. I mean, All right, we, the, the I, like jabs. This, I like getting the seven sometimes because sometimes people in the first six do something a little different and you can get, you know, some somebody to fall to you. Uh, Jason is uh, coming for me already, already calling out the Burns trade. I've gone back and forth on it like <laughs> multiple times today already. It's just like, I'm what, really what are you thinking now? Where are you at now? Really, the thing I'm just confused like, why did they sign Reese Hoskins at this point? Mm -hmm. I don't get that. Oh, nice. Right. I'm very happy here to get to get your done. I know I feel like stacking dingers, I feel like in general, just community has been high on him and like projections have him higher than the 110. So, in any draft, when I can get your done at the 110, I'm very happy, but especially in, in a perfect game. So, definitely not complaining. All right. I'm going. Spencer Strider. I probably won't have him again in a perfect game. Don't know exactly how many I'm going to take. And I'm going to continue my soft fade of Matt Olson. Just nothing really, no real reason. Just <laughs> taking Bobby Witt, Bryce Harper over him. That sort of combo. Or Freddie Freeman if he's there. Mm -hmm, for um, sure. Yeah, for me, I'm happy to get Olson there, especially having... Alvarez also, I know perfect game is not that big of a contest. So something I'd also like to do is try to get a combo. You know, it's harder to get. And you're done falling one pick and then Olsen falling three picks, hoping maybe that combo is a bit more unique. Yeah. But obviously it would have been 
thing about going short is obviously very comfortable to have outfield outfield. I just know the rest of the draft. I can, you know, cruise and not not be in any stressful positions. But I'd rather get the unique combo. And Matt Olson projects well. Great year last year. So happy to get him there. And we did get the Gunnar Henderson pick 14. So oh, I missed that. We got a couple of oh, okay. interesting wild cards oh, yeah. already with Bex oh, and PDX. Ooh, that's got that's you very that interesting. So Wu Tang, you take Garrett Cole. Um, are you actively targeting Cole in the second round, or are you? I just kind of went off um, best available. Like I kind of my first my first two picks, I just went off who to who is at the top of the queue, and just yep. kind of see how it goes from there. Um, kind of feel like I I don't I definitely don't think I know enough to to like just start taking like weird like stands on people um so a, a lot of it is just going to be like um trying to like play it straight uh, a lot of um you know seven six seven try to stay stay in those kind of guard guardrails i don't know that i've I, I don't feel like confident enough to do like a you know like a five eight i don't even know what the other five pitcher eight infield i don't even know what the other one would be yeah. so i that i've been thinking about the eliminator a little bit and i think that might be an interesting combo if, if the room sets up right for that to just like smash outfielder and pitcher in the first few rounds or like first six, seven rounds, and then just like fill in a bunch of volume at infield. I don't, I don't know. That's the one initial thought I had. Like, I know people are going to say to play it safe, but that maybe the safest thing is just to build your late infield floor. I don't know. But yeah. What about for how, like, um, you know, in terms of overall like strategy, would you say you're doing anything really different in like a perfect game where the field is smaller and the advanced rates are a little softer versus the dinger? Or are you just kind of, you know, sticking to like the same principle, sticking to like your player takes and just going with, you know, what you've already been doing? Uh, I think I'm going to stack a little bit less. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with that. And um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really, I've only done you know, part of slow so far in this. So mm -hmm. I haven't really been in the clock to test my uh, ideas on it. Um, but I did like last year in the perfect game, I tried some things and drafted differently and it did not have good results or it, mm -hmm. it had worse results. So part of me just thinks this year I'm going to do it like it normally would. Yeah. So L saying mm -hmm. smaller field tournaments are interesting because you don't have to exactly hit the nuts the whole way through. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a big component for sure. Yeah, five eight seven was was pretty bad with pitching injuries. So you got yeah. uh, sorry, uh, Matt. You got Corey Seager to fall. Um, yeah, with the injury news. Wow, Ali De La Cruz thirty thirty two. Pretty okay. interesting room here. Pretty interesting room. I think I'm just gonna go. I'm sure to take Simeon here. Okay. Really like his projection. I've been, you know, it's kind of like what I said earlier. You know, like kind of with the Schwarber pick, I could have won Schwarber. Like I can just get comfortable and take Yelich, take Brian Reynolds, Signal, and Jones. Tell myself I have two outfielders. You know, feel comfortable. But something I've been working on, you know, for baseball and in general is being more comfortable doing uncomfortable starts and and then you know fixing it later. So that's something I'm trying to work on. You know, usually it's like very into the data so I'll look at the data what's the optimal what's the high cv even it's like two percent difference you know i'm like i need to do that all the time but you know having more experience i'm trying to push myself more to do starts i wouldn't normally do and then figure it out later and i see now you're at you're on the clock yelich like yeah that so i'm just i'm definitely gonna take that value on yelich okay. um and add in a, a nolan jones upside pick behind it I think those guys actually I haven't don't have any of that combination. So that's kind of an interesting pair together. Mm, thinking about Brian Reynolds here, I don't love the pick, but like I said before, just getting the outfield just makes it more comfortable. Um you know, yeah, you know, I'm talking a big game 30 seconds ago saying how I don't want to do it, but you know, it's a perfect game. So I think this I think this might be my highest buy-in for draft. I know I've split one with like a buddy before, maybe we put in less but i think for my own draft i think this is maybe the most i've done so you know i'm gonna, gonna go back on my own ways maybe get a bit more bold in the dinger and just take the outfield there feel a bit more comfortable 
Sure. I'm ADP discount too, you know, we'll never really say no to that. Yeah. Um, so I apologize if it wasn't you, but you've had some recent success in the hockey streets, I think. Yeah. And in the hockey dailies. Yeah. I, I love it. Honestly, like I'm, I'm from, I'm from Canada. So like hockey's in my blood and like just grew up playing hockey, loving hockey and uh, just loving everything on underdog and just got into it more recently. And honestly, it's been, it's been a blast. I recommend anyone who doesn't play hockey to give it a look, like, even if it's not something you're really comfortable with, I think in terms of underdog, it's a fantastic sport, you know, with the correlation, but you still have the positional scarcity too. a lot of really interesting things going on. And yeah, I've been enjoying it a lot and it's, fortunately I've had some, have some good runouts, which is now giving me more ammunition to play the dinger more, which I really wanted to do too. So overall really happy. And I'm just waiting for the day. I see more friends and family in the hockey streets There's similar guys. I saw Noble Sox road in the, or in the chat. I definitely see him in there too. So Waiting yeah. for hockey to grow. One day it'll come, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real blast. Yeah. <clears throat> so Matt, you went with uh, a second pitcher in Wheeler. Um, are you? Is this a usual early two pitchers for you, or um, just are you thinking about the advance rate? Mostly, um, I didn't love um, the two guys that were above Wheeler. Um, Yamamoto, I think, was one of them. Yeah. Um, I know there was some, like, question about um, whether or not they would deploy, like, a six-man rotation. Um, and then I thought I thought there was something about uh, – I read something about, like, his elbow. So – Oh. Yeah. I have not seen that. I thought I read something of, of, uh, about his contract that had to do with, um, with, like, the health of his elbow or something like that. So – Okay. Yeah. So I just I just went with uh, with Wheeler, but I definitely got to catch up on on my like my other position. I got I got two good anchors, but I definitely need to catch up on my my other positions. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. We got match with the four outfield start. Uh, Bex with the no outfield start. Uh, otherwise, pretty pretty usual. I mean, I guess we did get the LE and the Gunner, so some weird player choices, but not too many people going too out of out of left field with their structure. Yeah, even back started off with the Freddie at six. Turns out, like after that, he took Ramirez at ADP, and then Gosman, like only five picks out before ADP, and Lopez too. So it looks like he he's gone back in line after the Freeman started six, which is really interesting. I wish I could understand that better to take Freeman I, and not six. I guess if you're just doing maybe one perfect game and. It's just a player take thing. I guess I guess that makes sense, but pretty interesting yeah. how he went like back in line after making that pick. Sure. I think it's just total projected points. Oh, match yeah. goes with a fifth yeah. outfielder. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming out better as well. yeah. <clears throat> this is why, you know, I have to prepare for 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 the streams. You know, always football, the wide receivers go. You have a big baseball stream, the outfielders go. I have to have to protect myself against that. You are on the clock. Oh, all right. I know the uh, I know the the, the badge bros love uh, <laughs> oh, nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm man. I don't know what to do with Jazz. I take him some. I'm not as heavy on him as some others have been talking him up. Uh, just health and just strikeout rate. Just like t mm -hmm. two like pink flags on him that kind of scare me away and then just being on a pretty bad team. But like when it comes to him being healthy, he's going to project really well on like you're mm -hmm. doing a daily draft. <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of with you on that one. He's not, not someone I have a lot of yet. Maybe that's a hole for me, but I'll, I'll take him at ADP, but he's definitely not someone that I'm targeting. Hmm, another interesting spot. I'm pretty, and I haven't done and looked in enough about Lane Thomas, but just looking at like his last year stats, there's just a crazy line he put up, 1,400 points. That always makes me think. But you know, depending if I want to go a pitcher here to start, I don't love going pitcher super early. But uh, I think I'm just gonna take just take Nola. I don't I don't love that pick to be honest. But okay, can can do worse than getting myself in a position where you know I'm running short on pitchers and uh, you know it's all a lot of the data. That you know, stacking dingers have been working on showing that you know pitchers in the middle round is huge, and I usually like to get my pitching done you know before let's say round fifteen. Obviously, it depends on the draft. So 
you know, anytime I can get a pitcher in, getting that ball rolling, knowing that I'm going to have to get to six or seven in a relatively short amount of time. For me, it's like, if I'm not sure what I'm doing, it's taking a pitcher and pass ADP. I can, I can live with that. All right. So I'm for sure going Machado here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Bregman's pretty tasty there. Um, Suzuki, I'm taking a lot in this position, but I think I'm going to just make this a. I think I'm going to bump Freddie above these other guys. Uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Arenado went at 15 and nine. Uh, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think with like he is a beneficiary of Corbin Burns being gone because now he is just that front number one guy and like. <clears throat> If he stays healthy, he's going to get mo- the most innings of his career. So, um, I'm I'm fine bumping him ahead of those. Probably a little bit of homerism there. Uh, I definitely could have gone. Do definitely could have gone with any of these other pitchers between him and uh, the top two. But we're we're going to start just pretty even here. Um, Maybe a little bit behind on outfield in general, based on the room. Mm-hmm. I like that you said that, like keeping it flat at the beginning. I feel like I, I do that too, where you know, beginning of the drafting season, at least for me, it's pretty early for me in the baseball sheets. I'm in a bunch of slows, but still getting used to all the ADP and looking at all the projections and stuff, and just keeping it flat at the beginning, trusting ADP to some degree, and just making sure I have some guys, and then you know, leaning more into into the player takes, you know, as as you know, the draft season progresses. So. I agree with you there, especially in this pitching tier. I'm, I'm happy to take any of those guys. Matt with Ozuna. Yeah. Um, this, the this are going, they're going, they're going. PDX took Nolan at Arenado at 59 and then Stephen Kwan at 62. So they are definitely getting their guys. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Brought up Lynn Thomas before. I'm curious. I'm curious where you're at on him because not sure if you you know have good info on him. But like I said before, like just a stat line last year that really like jumps out to me, especially in you know with the outfield scarcity and stuff like that. I'm curious. I'm curious where you're at on him. If you're someone you're taking or fading or trying to go even with. Uh, I'm out. You're out. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm got me. I uh, maybe like two or three percent. Mm-hmm. By the time it's all over, just <clears throat> excuse me. So he essentially is like none of the underlying stuff supports what he did last year, but mm-hmm. there's also no reason that he can't just have the same playing time leadoff opportunity that he had last year that just allowed him to rack up the stats. Um, so it's definitely uh, a scary fade in a way because like there's nobody pushing him away, but this this older profile breakout guy who like none of the underlying stuff really supports is just hard for me to go with but um mm-hmm. obviously he's an outfielder and if if you're getting good value on him I don't mind it because he should have the volume um but I'm never looking specifically to take him mm-hmm. let's see We kind of got, we're all on one side of the board, so we got to fill this the, the air here on uh, <laughs> the rest of the board. Yeah, yeah, we, um, we all open in the same spot. Can can't spill spill too much, but at least it looks it looks like we have uh, pretty pretty different starts at least so far, at least in terms of the pitching. So maybe maybe, maybe well, I guess at this point it's actually not that different, but you know maybe come a time in the draft, you know, you know a few rounds later when we have. You know more more clear positional needs, but at this point in time, like even in the whole room, like you know, there's a guy with five outfielders, but everyone's like staying pretty by the book in terms of you know their allocation to each position. So it should 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 open up, you know, as the draft goes on. But right now, it's it seems kind of what I was expecting. Like it's pretty pretty tight with how everyone's building, and then obviously the outfielders are flying. That's something I'd always always expect in a room like this. Yeah. So I pulled up Lane Thomas Lane. Lane Stomp Lane Thomas, I can say it. Uh Lane Thomas's fan graphs page and uh his best projection is to be three percent better than average with the bat in terms of mm. WRC plus. Uh 
Yeah, I don't want to hear that at all. Uh, and last last year he was only nine percent better. So uh, the price is doesn't match the underlying stuff, uh, mm -hmm. but the volume could be there. Uh, but like looking at this, uh, he had 101 runs last year with 86 RBIs, and he's projected for let's see the most. Zips has him at 87 runs, so nothing really says that we should be in on him. All right, so we are on the clock. All right, um, the Riley Green rise continues. Um, all right, I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take another pitcher here, Grayson. Uh, I could have taken him or Jesus in this scenario. And then just to go with the Elich, I'm going to take Jackson Churio, who I'm nice. it's fun. That's fun. just minorly adding in uh, him. Um, as most people, previous viewers of mine know, I'm not, I'm almost always out on prospects. Um, but I think we're still in an era or in a point of the draft where um, I still want to take these guys now before spring comes and we have definitive news. Uh, obviously that could be bad. They could drop down if they have issues in spring, but they, I want to be ahead of any more potential rise on some of these guys. Um, obviously uh, he pairs well with the LH in this one. So we're going to do that. No, I think I think I think that's very sharp to try to get ahead. Like we've seen in so many different examples, not even just in the baseball contest, but just in general. You know, rookies who people are already think are pretty good and already have a solid ADP, like in very early drafting season, I feel like it's a common trend where you know they, they end up even rising even more. And if they fall, it's usually not by that much unless there's some, you know, unforeseen news that comes out. So I yeah. definitely like that, especially with the outfielder. Like, you know, we all saw Corp and Carol last year just like continually rise and rise and rise and you know, I was watching all the streams. He'll be like, at this price, I don't know if I can do it. But then another week goes by and he's his ADP has gone up even more, you know? So yeah. with, with, with these assets that we don't know a lot about right now, but all we know is that they're exciting and that the market already does have faith in them. Um, I agree with you. Like, I'd rather be ahead of it than not have it all. And then, you know, you feel even less inclined to maybe chase that ADP up because, you know, your, your bags are already somewhat packed with him. Yeah, so definitely... Uh, Ben's pointing out, you know, green in front of Solaire is pretty tough to do. Um, and uh, yeah, Jason's Jason's with him too. Um, so you guys got you got you got Jesus Lazardo, uh, Noah, and Justin Steele. Uh, so that's all your set. Or that's your second and third pitcher. Um, any anything about those guys specifically that you guys like? Um, I was actually gonna. I was, I had Joe Ryan starred, but uh, no, Bosox got me. He's got me actually a couple mm -hmm. times here. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should stop starring, guys. I guess he can see him or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I forgot to tell you. I was I was sharing your screen also with everybody. We got our cues exposed. <laughs> yeah, for me with Lazardo, it was really just you saying that you were going to take him. I was like, he just fell two more picks. So, <laughs> but God is taken there, you know? How could I not? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll definitely take like the, the 10 pick ADP discount on Lazardo. And I have one pitcher. He's he's someone that, uh, like, definitely we saw has a high ceiling and someone that I'm comfortable clicking at ADP or even reaching a couple spots ahead of ADP. So, when he's in a positional need for me, falling 10 ADP. You're, you're you're saying you would have taken him. I thought that was a really an easy click for me. Didn't have to think too much for that. All right. So Bex gets his. Oh, I, sorry. I'm I'm confusing guys. Match Match was the guy who started all outfielders. He's only got George Kirby at pitcher right now. But uh, I do like Zach Eflin. Yeah, we also got a a one five two build coming in now. It's pretty interesting. Right. Don't see too many of those. Matt takes yeah. another pitcher and Mitch Keller. Yeah, there, there goes Ooh, the pitchers. Rodon would have been interesting. I was thinking about that too. Um, 
yeah, I I kind of take all those guys here, uh, except for Bieber, and I don't take a ton of Yuri Perez. Um, yeah. But Eflin, Keller, Rodon, Musgrove. Yeah, I, I definitely would have taken Rodon or Musgrove. Now I'm just debating whether I want to tap into the Bieber Perez. Like like I said, I like to have my pitching down in the middle rounds and I'm in round nine. I only have two. It's just a question of want to reach. My outfield's kind of fine. I kind of like CJ Abrams is just I don't know too much of him. This could be a good spot for me to take him. But uh I'll, I'll just go Shane Bieber. I, I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of him. I have a pitcher need now, so I'll just Go ahead and take a share here when in a time of need. Hopefully, you can have some spike weeks. All right. Uh, I got three pitchers. I don't know if I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm definitely not looking at a pitcher here. Um, I'm going to take maybe a, a boring pick here in terms of a accumulator type with no power in Jung Hu Lee. Uh, I might be overpaying for him here. Uh, but I feel like uh, I'm comfortable there. Um, let's see. We got the Wyatt Langford rise. I've already taken one prospect that I'm worried about. Um, mm -hmm. Boy, this is tough. These infielders are kind of all the same. Um, I think... Yeah, we'll end up with Glaber Torres. Um, like I was, I was between him. Well, I guess I should wait till you guys go. But him and Dan B. Swanson. Uh, I love Dan B. Swanson. Yeah, I don't. Maybe I should have gone with Reese Hoskins. You know, after I said I wasn't going to stack as much and then make a three-man stack. But um, yeah, so you, you get Abrams to come back. Um, Al is pointing out that number one has gone five straight pitchers. So after their kind of core there, they went Glasnow, Snell, Scooble, Bobby Miller, Kyle Bradish. Um, I like that group. That's a nice group. Yeah, that's a nice group for sure. Uh, but for me, now, yeah, this, this is the guy. I, I felt your I felt your stress and your pain on when you were on the clock there. Like even for me on my spot, like. This is not a range I love. Like I'm not super confident in these pitchers. I like typically to wait a bit more on infield than to grab one here. It's not usually I don't usually take infield that around this ADP outfielder. Just now we're getting thin to players that like you can easily poke holes in, have projection holes too. So it's really kind of like pick your poison for me in this spot. Like no, nothing feels great. It's just like I'll often just lean into what my structure needs or take an ADP discount. So. You know, sure. for me, that's why I got CJ Abrams. If I can just get, you know, I got a nice ADP, someone that I haven't take, I haven't got a lot of, just because I, like I said, I just don't usually take infielder in this, in this, uh, in this part of the draft, and only at two infielder. So I'm happy to have three at this point. It's that, that, that's that's fine with me. Uh, Matt, you took Wyatt Langford, much to uh, Brad's chagrin. There, uh, he was probably going to take him here. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I know. <laughs> I needed somebody to go with Seager. I didn't have any. I I kept missing missing out on people. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah young would have been nice there too. Yeah, young. A lot of the guys that I want, they don't survive that turn. It's uh, it's pretty good <laughs> <cool> with us. <laughs> Here's what's this way, yeah. So now uh, he's not taking any more pictures. He's starts starting to fill out those bats. As he should at this point with, with five this early. Taking their time. Imagine they'll go. Yeah, I don't know why you would take a sixth pitcher here. Uh, it builds the little mini Milwaukee stack. <clears throat> yeah. For as long as the Willie Adams is still on the team and they don't trade him also. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, actually, I've actually done that uh in the dinger uh hoskins adams and then Contreras. yeah so, like if i'm if i'm heavy pitching heavy outfield i'm able to get that that brewers mini on my infields yeah and if you want to throw a self frelick as yep. a boring outfielder yep uh or if you want to like take a stab at garrett mitchell 
as like a sixth outfielder. Yeah. Definitely an interesting group. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, just looking at a little bit about Joey Ortiz, the, the guy that the Brewers got as part of the burn steal, the infielder. He's kind of a third base shortstop guy. So that's where I'm just like, well, now Willie's gone. When when they <laughs> when they're doing double signs are there, <laughs> yeah. Huh. But uh, that's why I was joking earlier today about uh, building a, a Dodger stack with Willie Adams as part of it. <laughs> that's really getting out of it. Imagine imagine if that gets that. That would be so amazing. <laughs> well, it was a I had another Milwaukee player, so it was like it was like a crossover stack. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's good. <laughs> that was mostly just to do in my own pain today. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if this guy's going to take a picture. Yeah, he does. That's his third picture. Hmm. Yeah, again, thinking about picture, but not not super inclined to be clicking on these guys. But hmm. okay, you got three now. Yeah, I got three. I typically like to have more than three, but you know. Just the board is what the board's gonna do. I'll just take take another outfield. Like, I, like at least for me, it gets starting to get very uncomfortable. I know that I'm gonna need to take at least if I didn't take one there, I'd have to take at least two more. I definitely, you know, maybe maybe to a fault and really trying to avoid the the late round outfield dart throws. I'm just so much more comfortable taking dart throws at infield than a pitcher that I really don't like leaving myself in a spot where I'm not getting someone at outfield who, you know, I think can project pretty solid and at least has consistent playing time. So. Uh, definitely just feel more comfortable with the alpha there than the pitcher. But, you know, I feel like that's always kind of what it's like in, in these drafts. You know, you're always you're always weak somewhere. You're always trying to catch up in one position and then try to balance that with all the player takes and, you know, everything else that, that goes into it can become tricky. But, like, for me, making sure I have that outfield, pretty important. Yeah, so for that reason, I took Dalton Varsho, who just mm -hmm. should get all the playing time he can. Hopefully he has a bounce back. Uh, I don't love Justin Verlander here. I usually I'm shooting for upside here and going with like a Javier bounce back or a Bybee emergence. Um, but with who I have, I feel really strong at pitcher that I kind of like adding. I, I, know, I don't know if that makes sense, but adding a, a boring pitcher to a, a a, a strong pitching pool already. Um, I don't know. That's where I'm going with. Yeah. And then those guys all immediately go. Interesting. The guy before me, seven infielders, decided to take an eighth. So he's got a he's got a one eight three going on now. So that, that's yes. certainly something. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's the one taken way out of ADP too. So I wonder how off the rails it's gonna go. I like honestly at this point I hope he just stops at infield so like our, our draft doesn't get tossed, you know, like <laughs> at least finish the draft strong enough that like it's a valid draft. So yeah. Please no more infield for him. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's our duty now. Everyone in this everyone in this room, we go we gotta all take the infield. You can't be seeing any any green on his screen. <laughs> no nothing. Bo Sox was almost with VAR show there. Uh he's either a vibes based draft or he's auto drafting. And he didn't know the room. That he set up his favorite players and didn't know that the room started. Perhaps that is the danger of these of sitting in a perfect draft or perfect yeah, game. Yeah, so some people just like I've seen before, like in these big contests. Like I, I've clicked on them by mistake once. My heart like drops. I enter like a two hundred fifty dollar contest, clicking on the wrong thing, and like there's just like four people sitting in there for like I don't even know how long. Like I don't know who these people are. Like always ready to go. Like drop their life at any moment to. Or up, like, a he, he could be out. like pre gaming before he's got to go out, and now he's <laughs> got to come into a one eight three like all like yeah. <laughs> half hammered and try to. Like, try time to, to fix it. Let's go get to work. Draft his way out of it. <laughs> you just click off the green button on your draft, and you're like time to get to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Start stacking San Francisco outfielders. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think I would just like <laughs> mash my face into the keyboard and just break the best. <laughs> I, I did consider adding Vinny there to my uh, Bobby Witt um, mm -hmm. as a little mini stack. Uh, I don't know uh, if you guys are getting to much uh, Kansas City outside of those two guys. Um, this could be 
completely wrong, but I have actually late, late taken um, Hunter Renfro. Like okay. very, very late, like last pick. I don't know if that is right or wrong, but I do, I do have some of him. Sure. I guess uh, I just, for him, I just saw him get tossed from two different teams or two different teams didn't want him. And then, well, yeah, one team didn't want him. Then since Cincinnati brought him in and they sort of stopped playing him also. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about what other people are saying or yeah. uh, the teams are seeing in him that they just like not even running him out. Uh, investor better here. I'm a Marlins fan, so I thought I was biased, but uh, they do like Solaire at his ADP. Um, uh, with Solaire, it is uh, where he's going to end up, and he doesn't have a huge uh, time played track record. Like his time, like he's going to hit home runs when he's playing, but how much injury potential is there is kind of that's um, kind of where the the rise has never come from him. I do think we get a little bit of a rise when he signs. Um, Dogman's in on the Nelson Velasquez hit ball hard train. Hmm. Yeah, you mentioned the the Royals. For me, at least, like again, like I haven't been too too in the weeds on like player takes and like who I'm really going wrestling for. But I just remember last year, like I was taking like MJ Melendez in like the late rounds. I remember he projected pretty well last year, and like he was something that was comfortable clicking in the late round so now when i see him have have that beautiful yellow instead of instead of the green you know i know he's a young player too so a young player that i was taking as an infield last year i saw his uh i know just from a total underdog stat points you know maybe his underlying metrics aren't great but i saw he did hit the thousand mark last year and uh so he, he's someone that, that i would consider just based on based on vibes pretty much based on last year and i saw his adp uh, i think he goes like 175 so he does get drafted so it's not uh not a crazy reach to, to be taking him also <clears throat> yeah, he's a guy that has always projected better than he's performed. So, uh, you know, the, there's a huge strikeout issue, especially against lefties. Uh, but he is a guy that hits the ball hard, and the systems like the underlying stuff that they continue to project him so well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you can decide what to do. You know, I don't. I have I got to him more when he was like a last round pick, but he's sort of gotten hard to draft for me. Um, all right, here we're gonna do a little bit of a mini Arizona stack uh, that I think is pretty nice in this area. Um, Lords Guriel as just a outfielder that uh, has a fit on that team, and then the upside home run potential of Eugenio Suarez. So um, I felt like I got behind at outfielder and I've tried to make up for it by spending a little more capital on it. Um, and then I'll, I'll build out from here. So that's sort of been my plan. <clears throat> so you got Erod and take Kim. Yeah, Kim from here there was like pure, not pure ADP slave, but pretty ADP slave. Like, again, like, I guess this is more ranged out that it would be taking infielders in, but I don't know if I have Kim yet. I don't know how much I'm really going to get of him. So he's falling 18 picks. Infielder is something that I'm needing for my structure. Like, sometimes it's just that simple for me. I was debating taking one of the, one of the pitchers there. I think that for sure could have made sense too. I'm at five now and... You know, the guy, I, like I said before, I don't really like taking the darts as much on outfield. There, I feel a bit more comfortable at pitcher. But, and there's some, just some guys here that are obviously pretty volatile. I know from from last year, I just haven't maybe done enough, done enough research or looked into it too much now to feel comfortable taking a, a Sailor McKenzie right now. Like, just not really sure where, where they're at, but I'm sure the ADP is, is solid enough to trust. But uh, I'd rather just go, go with the good old ADP and, uh, and lock that in. So uh, our friend PDX took another infielder in William Contreras. So I'm that's uh, <laughs> not great for the overall validity of this draft. And it's not – he took John Gray at 155. So it's not like he's auto-drafting. Yeah, it's that just strange. Sure. 
<clears throat> All right. Jason had a ton of Renfro last year. Uh, I had a ton of them the year before. Uh, I sort of got off of him when he went to the Angels last year um, just because I saw him struggle as a brewer. So that was more of a just I had visual on him. And uh, Jewish McCaffrey took him yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't. I feel that. <laughs> um, but, like, there, there's no reason that he can't just – he can't play in Kansas City. Like uh, the the depth chart, there's nothing pushing him out of the way. So even if he is not super great, he should have a regular spot on that team. Um, I don't know what other outfielders they have coming up, um, but it's not like there's any top top prospect that's going to push him off. Looking at there's also uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Ahead. I was just uh, gonna mention uh like for late in the draft, even uh like uh like something I've also been trying to do is scroll down a bit more, especially at the end of drafts. You know, like I said, like pretty maybe to a fault, like tethered to ADP, probably a little bit too much. And uh I feel like maybe even in these smaller contests, you know, if you, you get a good scroll down, like a smaller field contest could have a bigger impact of, of having one of those players. So that that's something I'm also thinking about right now. It's scrolling down maybe getting my cue cooking a little bit um but still yeah maybe not fully sold on on what's optimal there but i feel like it would, i would be i would be more inclined to, to scroll down or in a smaller field uh my my general feeling is that um the the a lot of the guys are getting sucked out of those last rounds that have the best potential um so i think i think you have there's, well, I don't want to mean that there's nobody left with potential, but mm -hmm. um, like Jake Berger here is the is the prime example going at 175. Who a few weeks ago he was at 200. So these sort of upside cases are getting sucked out of that late round ADP, um, but that means somebody else is getting back pushed down there. So the question is, well, I guess. The question would be, are, are we getting more people going undrafted? Like, are there less people taking shots in general at the end? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I took Burger just to go with Jazz and Arias. Need the stack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I don't think – oh, I'm on the clock. I don't think it was wrong for the – I didn't mean to, like, say you were doing that wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Just in general. Um, all right. Got to get my guy Trevor Story here. Um, and then, then we're going to put Ezekiel Tovar with Nolan Jones. Uh, and now the way that I've built this with 4 6, six uh, I'll probably be, there'll be for sure a seven pitcher draft. And I'll start putting together some of those guys now. Yeah, I find myself so far this year going. Uh, I remember l last year I was actually doing a lot of a lot of six pitcher builds. I remember, uh, you know, on from, from from the data that that Chris pulls that at the time, you know, looked like early pitcher was really strong, and I had a lot of builds where I would take pitchers early and then stop at six. But you know, with 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 the new information we have now, looking more like the early bats are better, and kind of what I mentioned before, just about outfielder. How I, I don't love taking shots at guys at the end of the draft that I think could be a zero or could have playing time issues. I find myself getting into a lot, a lot of six pitcher. Uh, sorry, a lot of six outfielder. I'm doing a lot of uh, seven pitcher, seven infielder, and yeah. I really haven't been going into the six pitcher yet. I'm sure I'll, I'll end up on on some. Like I don't want to not do any six pitcher, but I feel like from the data, I want to get those bats in early. And if I'm getting those bats in early, the total draft capital spent at pitcher, it's pretty hard to get to if you only want to take six total. So I'm curious. I'm curious how how you're how you're doing with your uh, with, with with your structures and which one you're going six in, or if it's pretty evenly distributed across the three. Matt, you want to take well, that for me? Yeah. Um, 
So a lot of times I actually don't take as many pitchers um, early as I did in this in this particular draft. Um, a lot of times I'm probably not. I'm, I'll take like two in the two or three in like the top like 100. Um, so that kind of pushes me more towards a, a seven, usually like a seven six seven. Um, the times where I'll go like six seven seven is if I take like a Strider or Cole. And then a lot of times I'll I'll get like a Gosman or a Wheeler or some, like somebody in that range, not necessarily those guys. Um, like a lot of times, like going by ADP, I'll get like a guy at like 16, 39, 70 something, like 98. And if I have like four like that, then I'm only going to take, I'm only going to go six pitcher. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say pretty much the same thing. I'm, I'm mostly six outfielders. Uh, this one taking Strider, uh, I will probably be, or I'd be more likely to lean the six pitcher. Um, although um, the you know sort of missing this some of this group, the the Jose Barrios, uh, the Imanaga, Pavetta, Ober, mm-hmm. some of these guys that I do like. Um, it's kind of crazy to see Bailey over there, actually. I didn't realize he was up that high. Um, but, yeah, at this point where I didn't take any of these guys, I might end up with seven, even though I took um, even though I took Strider in the first round. There's there's a big group here that I like um, as, like, five or, five or six, even if I'm starting early. Like, I almost want to be, like, only taking one and these last four rounds in general. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I'm, I'm just like, for me, I'm so much more naturally, like if I just autopilot a draft, like I am just waiting on infielder and taking them late. Like just like the names, the projection, it just like, it just feels so comfortable to just hammer in the infield late. I think last year I did that to a fault. Like I think I neglected infielder early too much, but uh, like Chris had a really good, a really good data showing, you know, like, how many points each additional infielder gave you starting from, you know, the first one you took and, you know, data shows early infields are really impactful. So now I'm trying to incorporate that. Um, I, I just think in general in best ball, like I just have a natural bias to really try to avoid zeros on any of my picks. Like if I could take a guy who's risky with upside, then that's fine. But guys who don't even have that great of a ceiling and they have playing time concerns or just fear that they could be a zero, you know, baseball season is so long. You know, if you play traditional fantasy baseball, there's so many moves like, it's such a grindy sport that I really want to make sure that every player I'm taking, I feel confident in that's going to give me points throughout the year. Cause you only have 20 guys throughout the entire season. Um, so I, I, I agree with that. Like for me, like, like I said, naturally I'm trying to go infield late, but oh, I'm on the clock. Got to focus on that. Yeah. Uh, let's see uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, another Matt, the third Matt of the discussion is adding that, uh, even if you do take six outfielders early, uh, Outfielder four through six probably aren't that great, so maybe a seventh outfielder does make sense to, as a contributor to the outfield, which is interesting um, idea. All right, we we get Kikuchi here, which I am absolutely happy to grab. Um. Then I got to get my guy Seth Lugo in on this. I uh, probably have a ERA of four and a half, but uh, mm-hmm. there's no reason for Kansas City just to throw him out all year and get innings. But at this point, it's mm-hmm. like pitchers, you're deciding, do you want innings or do you want strikeouts? Because there's not a guy here that you feel confident has both. Yeah, so uh, a little rebuttal here to Matt. Uh, if I'm drafting, like the flex will be infielder most of the time. I'd rather lean fragile at outfield with six most of the time. So you add the seventh infielder, and that's yeah, I generally agree with that. generally yeah. What I like doing. even just for the like the sake of like if you're gonna have you know like this X amount of batters depending on how many pitches you take. Like we do know infielders score more raw points, so having more infielders because of that flex is another great reason that you'd want more infield. 
I def I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and especially you're, you're assuming too in, in a lot of these drafts, like you're you are putting a lot of heavy investment into outfield early too. So it just makes all the all the more sense for me to go into go into these seven outfielder seven infielder builds. <clears throat> yeah, and and we saw Brad did you know he looked through the or not Brad sorry Chris. Chris looked through the data of last year's scoring, and uh, there's only one week where uh, lineups had outfielder in the flex position more than they did the infielder, and that was week one. So oh. the, the data from last year definitely bears out that the majority of the time your infielder is filling that flex position. <clears throat> Player also, like I haven't, like I said, haven't done deep dives, but... I know Ryan Pepiot. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but I know he was a, a bit. I know he was like a piece in in the Glasnow trade, and I just you know just from my from, I guess like a more of a bro science take, but just like these raised pitchers just keep coming out of nowhere, and seeing that he was a piece in the Glasnow trade, I don't really know much about him, but like I'm just inclined to take him for that one reason. I'm like, is this the next raised pitcher that it's going to pop off out of nowhere? And I want to make sure I have some bags of him. I'm curious if you if you've done any you know more analysis on him or if you have any thoughts on him. So, yeah, definitely that is a, a common thought with Tampa. Hey, they're getting a pitcher. He must be good. Uh, and I don't, I'm not saying that he isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, the counterpoint I would say is people say the same thing with the Dodgers bringing a, a pitcher too. They're like, oh, well, they'll improve him. So I feel like that part is a wash. Uh, I, I definitely think he's worth uh, adding. Uh, I add him, I add Taj Bradley, and I add Aaron Savale. Um, the biggest issue with all three of those guys is like they could just all get take turns getting mm -hmm. starts. Um, uh, I guess behind behind uh, Eflin. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, Zach Littell is there. Um, Shane Boz could be up. So. I don't know how that like overall um, rotation is going to shake out, and the way Tampa uses pitchers, it'll probably be all of them will contribute. So, uh, but I definitely with the cost on those guys where they're at, I, I'd mix in all of them. Um, I'm not in on Shane Boz because he's never like put together any amount of innings ever. Uh, he's got he's got the highest like. Uh, stuff and his pitches of, of that group, but uh, he's just never pitched, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to click him. For sure, yeah. Something I think is like a, a key discussion. You know, it's been had before, but something I always remind myself: it's like, what players do you want in best ball versus what players you know you want in other formats? Like a player like that, where you know they have a ceiling, you're not really, not really sure about them. If you can get away from them and get a redraft league and just drop them, then it's fine. But you know, when you're tying yourself to them for the entire year, having that dead roster spot. Could be could be really difficult, especially in a contest like this where the advancements are a little softer. You don't really need that smash ceiling. I'd for sure be worried about taking players who I don't think are guaranteed into playing time. Like that, that's a big one for me. That's a really big one for me. All right. So PDX is going with the three outfielder build, maybe here, <laughs> which is not great. <laughs> Definitely not great. I mean, in round one, he took Kyle Tucker, so. He was to someone. He was round one. He was there, and then after that, he's like, "I have called. He's on the right track. Out for them, good to go." He was on the right track. Yeah, he, he started well. He started well, but uh, I'm adding a, a boring Brendan Rogers pick there to go with the uh, couple of Colorado guys. Um, I have been off of Alec Manoa, and I'm still going to be. But I just saw something. Um, I'm going to get on the trend, trendy Eric Fetty train here i he's coming over from korea and he was won the korean Cy young last year uh he doesn't project well because he was bad oh excuse me he was bad in the u.s so uh that's definitely a fly, flyer that i sh maybe should have been on earlier and not be grabbing him now that he's trendy uh but i also feel like he's going to go higher so based on the the talk around him um oh he PDX did get Ramon Laureano. Nice. Oh, we so see that draft yeah. integrity. Problem solved. Bring so. up that draft integrity. Nice. That's big. That's big for the program. Well, he had to take him because uh, Hunter Renfro went last round. 
<laughs> um, I have taken more Ramon Laureano than I have Hunter Renfro. I will say that much. Uh, both well, Brad, Brad jumped on the grenade for everybody. So, <laughs> uh, no, I did see something. Uh, I mentioned Alec Manoa that they were talking. Uh, front office was saying that he is going to be a starter this year. So, take that for did what you, it is. Did you see him posting workout videos on TikTok? I heard good things I, about the workouts. I did not. I did not. I'm best not on TikTok. Season. He's the best shape of his life candidate. Best shape of his life season. We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back. You got to get ahead of it. It's February. <laughs> uh, yeah. You don't want to be in the regular best shape of life season. Um, um, I guess I didn't think much of him when he was quote unquote good. So it's, it's pretty easy for me to stay off of him now. Um, he went from having like no strikeout rate to that one year. He was really good. He just had a strikeout rate and the slider was just like perfect. Uh, and I he never really had much other than that. So just not, not exactly a guy I was, I would be on the price is right though. If you yeah. want to jump on it and take that risk. I mean, did he even get drafted? He did not, I don't think. Oh, I didn't hit refresh. No. I don't think he did. Ah. That was my 24th draft. I was going to say dinger, but that was not a dinger. Uh, no, uh, Severino and Cutter Crawford, Sean Manaya, Dean Kramer, JP Sears were the other last round. Um, got, got to take notes who, who, like, who the red badges, who the Nobo Sox is taking in 20th round of a perfect game. Got to get some dinger shares. Can't miss the boat. I see you. All right. So, uh, a little discussion in the chat about five pitcher team. Would you guys want to talk about five pitcher teams? Or you want to go over your teams? Uh, I would just say, yeah, I saw, I was reading the chat about that. Um, I, I would say if I was going a five pitcher team, I, I, I would, I saw a comment about the, the five, eight, seven with five pitchers in round six to 12. Personally, for me, I would want to have pitchers earlier than that. Like, I think if you want to get the optimal uh, allocation to pitcher in terms of draft capital, if you're going to take a five, I think you need to take them in the early rounds. I, I think starting around six would be too late for me. Um, and then how to make up those pitchers. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw Wu said you want a guy with high upside instead of low floor. I, I do th I do I do like that, but at the same time, like I said, you have those five guys for the entire year, regardless of injury, stuff like that. So I don't know, tricky for me. I, I think the most important part is just making sure you have adequate draft capital into pitcher, which would mean taking them early and taking them often, and then and then stopping there. Yeah, uh, well, I would say if it, take three early and then build innings, guys. Uh, for the other two, I would say, yeah, yeah, uh, innings, no Bo Sox. Like you you want a ton of innings Definitely. pitched. Uh, question: Will this be canceled? I'm not sure exactly. I hope I not. I really hope not. I really. I, hope I do not. like <laughs> the team. We did get uh, PDX with the seven nine four build. Um, Tucker, Quan, Lo, and Loriano. <laughs> Uh, so th this person was making their picks. Uh, so hopefully they, this does not get thrown out. They will probably win in the infield. No, I, I, th I think we should be good. I like, I think, I think that last Loreano pick re re really resurrected us. I think, I think we're good with that one. Uh, that was a big one, but I, th I think we should be fine. All right. Yeah, uh, it was, it was over. And then he took Loreano and then we are so back. We're, we're so back. <laughs> All right, so uh, who wants who wants to go first with their team? Um, yeah, you're, you're you're over Wu Tang, so we can yeah, start there. He, and he made a noise first, so uh, <laughs> that's we'll, it. We'll, you ended up with six, seven, seven. Uh, yeah. What do you think about this pitching room that you've put together? Um, the only one, if I could have it back, um, I was back and forth on so Mitch Keller, uh, where he went. Uh, cause Rodon was, was right there, but I kind of was like, Oh, I already have, I already have Cole. And I, I don't know if that like really matters, but I, I kind of hate taking two guys from the same pitching staff on the same team. Um, 
I, I don't know if that like makes any difference, but it like, I don't know. It like sets me up. It, <laughs> it like wears me out when I do it. So I don't like it. Um, and um, yeah. So whenever, so yeah. So like whenever I have like four in the first like hundred, 120, I'm, I'm pretty much going to settle on, on six. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely. Um, I have a ton of Dean Kramer. Um like a ton and i don't know if that's right or wrong and then and then burn and then the burn straight happened i was like mm, i hope that doesn't wreck my bags <laughs> yeah so uh i'm not sure exactly how the the end of that will play out um obviously the the first three are pretty set and burns uh grayson and uh kyle bradish um, right from there they don't really have a guy that you can say is exact so it could be dean yeah, Definitely could be Dean. Um, um and then infield. <clears throat> yeah, infields. Um, I got Corey as my as like my anchor. Um, and then it was kind of I was kind of felt like I, I was like kind of in spots where like I didn't really love the infielders that were available, and I was trying not to fall behind on outfield, especially because a lot of times where I was um I kind of felt like I was like, all right, I'm just going to take a picture here because I don't, you know, the, the, I wound up in some like kind of dry spots where there, there was just no outfielders. And um, so I was like, all right, I like the pitching here. And then, um, so yeah, so I ended up kind of filling out my infield late. A lot of the, uh, the infielders I grabbed um, were were to fill out um, like stacks that I had with uh, guys in my outfield. Um, tried to get the uh, the Seattle uh, driveline guys to go with uh, <laughs> to go with Rodriguez. So I got uh, JP and Ty France. Sure. Um, and then um, yeah, uh, Julian to go with um, Royce and um, I don't think I think this is like the first time I'd ever clicked Arias. I don't know. I don't even know if that's like good or not. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's definitely not a, a, a spike week guy. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, I in the context of having uh, Jazz and and Berger to go with him, I don't know. And and I, I thought I saw somebody say that that Miami's playing at Coors in the uh, in one of the playoff weeks or something like that. Numi's an hour late. It doesn't matter as long as he's here. That's what counts. And uh, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, investor. I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm talking about my I'm talking about my uh, my twin stacks and 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 Numi appears. That's, that's <laughs> can't be a coincidence. Perfect. It's perfect. Perfect timing. Um. Yeah, I was actually really upset. I, I didn't get a uh, Correa. Correa did not come back to me. He's the only one. But I got um, I got Buxton. I got Julian. I got I got Royce. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I, I like I like your team. Thank you, thank you. I felt like I was making mistakes the entire time, so that's part of the part of the experience. <laughs> All right, uh, Noah, you've got uh, a seven, seven, six. Um, your pitching room to me uh, is 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 pretty solid. Um, you got some upside shots and some uh, inning. You got a lot of innings here, I think. Yeah, I, I just went from guys that I just feel good about you know, having good innings, like exactly what you said. So it's a little light for me in terms of like the allocation. Usually I try to have a more allocation into pitcher, but you know, every room's different. You have to adapt with obviously what the board is. Um, but I'm, I'm still pretty happy overall with, with the room. Like, like I said, in terms of the player takes, I'm not, I'm not super in the weeds yet to know about which certain guys I like and which certain guys I didn't like. But, you know, for me, I'm just taking names that I felt comfortable with that I know have projected well in the past. That I think the innings for me, getting them a good ADP in, in the right rounds for me, like that, that's really what I'm aiming for. So no, probably not my favorite pitching room, but I'm not going to complain about it. All right. And then you got your infield anchored by Matt Olson and Marcus Semyon. And then yeah, from for there. Me, we're, yeah. I was going to say you? like, I, I'm, I've been trying to do more to infielder elite infielder like that to start. And then the rest of the draft, that's, that's kind of the puzzle. I'm, I'm still figuring out. It's like, when do I put in my third? When do I get my fourth? Um, in this draft, you know, I kind of just took the ADP discounts, you know, when they came, you know, 
Abrams, I felt like I was in a position where a time that I can take an infield, same thing for Kim. And then the end, I just did my, 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 my safe and cozy classic strategy of just hammering and in, in like infielders at the end that I've just had successful seasons in the past. Like, I think the roles are pretty safe. I think they project well. So just guys that I think can, 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 you know, eat, eat weeks for me from this long, this long season, you know, only having seven infielders trying to get guys that I feel like can be reliable. Yeah. Jeremy Pena is a guy that I feel like people have got too far in the other direction on after his sort of weak season last year. Um, obviously he's not the guy we saw in his rookie year and in, in the playoffs when he was the world series MVP. But um, I think, I think we're too, people have gone too far in the other direction. So um, yeah, outfield Jordan Alvarez. So this is the best outfield room as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get you more, the second I saw Jordan fall one pass ADP, I'm like, this is a dream drop. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll feel I feel like kind of someone from another position, just like, Tried to stay comfortable. Like I was, I was saying before early in the draft, you know, like I'm trying to make myself uncomfortable, but in a perfect game on stream, you know, just take my outfielders, take it slow. Uh, but yeah, so I, I feel pretty solid in, in the in the outfielders that I ended up getting. Like, like no one really too flashy. No one I'm really excited about. I don't think I got any great discounts, but just guys that, like I said, I think playing time wise should be solid. Most of them have, you know, somewhat of a track record that I think they can be reliable and. I think I played this draft overall just like pretty safe, pretty solid. I wasn't trying to reinvent the wheel, just play play the structures, take guys that I'm comfortable taking at ADP that fit in my structure. And I feel like that's just the way it went. Yep. Excellent. I think my only quibble is Alex Verdugo. I don't understand why he's 130 and not 180. Um, That's very fair. All right. So... Uh, I got a seven seven six build myself. Um, I did end up maybe maybe with Strider and Peralta. I shouldn't have added Eric Fetty, but I got tempted by the hype train that is somehow mm-hmm. Eric Fetty this year. <laughs> um, this is a a pretty uh, well maybe not with Strider, but like a, make this a Zach Wheeler or a Luis Castillo, Pablo Lopez. And then that's a pretty usual pitching room for me in terms of the guys and the the distribution. Um, infield, um, just a, a little bit of a Colorado stack. And then I took some guys that I just I just liked at where they're that where they're going. Bobby Witt, I think, has infield one potential this year. And then outfield is probably where I feel the weakest or the most uh, scared just taking a real couple of real upside big upside big downside bets and Nolan Jones and Jackson Trio um, but yeah kind of built that in with some guys that are boring oatmeal type guys after um, so yeah there we go um, guys thank you for joining me uh, Matt Welcome to your first uh, stream draft. How yeah, how do you feel good. after the first one? Yeah, good, good. Um, I was uh, definitely nervous, and uh, I'm glad I didn't. Um, actually, I, I usually star up my players, but uh, I didn't actually do it here because, like, if if I had like a starred like I don't know, like Dean Kramer, I pick like 38, I would never <laughs> live <it> down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you'd have a story. A good yeah, story. I would actually. <laughs> and, and anyone who's been in the streets drafting long enough, like we've all done that before, you know, like I think we'd all understand that. If you don't understand that, like, you haven't done enough drafts. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, Noah, I think you were, you uh, came on for a, a, just more of a discussion based stream. So this was your first stream draft too. You feel, feel, feel good. Yeah, it was a blast. Like I really appreciate you having me on. Like I'm like, I, I watch a lot, a lot of draft content, like a lot of draft content. So it, it felt, felt great to be on the stream. Like, it always looks fun to it always looks fun to do and it was, it was just as fun as i thought so really appreciate you reaching out to the community giving us guys who don't have a platform don't stream ourselves but letting us come on the show have a draft experience what it's like you know talk some ball like this it's, it's yeah. all the good stuff so you no know, I, I loved it and i appreciate you having us on yeah that's yeah. really kind of the most fun thing i'm doing right now with the with these streams like being able to do the stacking dingers like more focused discussions just have people come talk baseball whoever wants like if you're out there watching this you want to come on just 
DM me wherever you can find me. Uh, yeah, love to have anybody on and talk. So for Matt and Noah, and uh, I will say good night for uh, everyone that's uh, watching out there.